My name is Ben Knowles from East Coast Yacht Sales, and this is a continuation of our video series on getting to know your Axapar 28. This particular video is going to be talking about the fuel system on board the boat, where stuff is, and fuel management and how I like to think about it on these boats. So please take a look at this video, and if you have any questions for us, feel free to reach out using the information below this video. All right, so I'm going to jump right in here. Um, you are going to see some older clips. I did try to start this video earlier this summer, um, and I'm going to try to stitch these different videos together. Um, uh, but I'm going to jump right in here and talk about, uh, first off, your fuel gauge on your Axapar 28. Um, you may have seen some older videos of mine. Um, I inherently have trust issues with gauges on boats in general. And, and I, in particular, I have a trust issue with fuel gauges on boats. Um, and so what I like to do is try to stitch together as much information as I can um, to really know what these numbers are representing. Um, and you should also know that every single gauge on a boat is a little different. So uh, whenever I get to know a boat for the first time, I'm typically writing these numbers down in a log. The numbers I pay attention to are uh, you you have your fuel gauge here which which tells you in gallons um, how much fuel you have left in the tank. I do find that these are fairly accurate for the most part with the exception of when the gauge uh, gets, uh, when the fuel gets low on the boat. Um, one thing that I do find being quite accurate is your fuel flow meter on your Mercury outboard. And so what I like to do is take advantage of that. And uh, there's a data point here that is your seasonal fuel used. Um, how you can get that information up on this screen is if you press and hold a certain data box um, on the this menu pops up and within the engine you can see fuel used season so you want to click that um, which is already selected on this boat um, and I typically have that number right below um, what my gauge is reading and so every time I fuel the boat up, I will reset this number back to zero. I know there's 74 gallons in this tank and every time I fuel up, I, I fuel up to the top. I won't over full fuel uh, the boat until it overfills. I'll explain why in a, in a little bit later, but um, when it's full, I know that I have 74 gallons in there. So I reset this number. Um, how I do that, and I'll show you, the, you this again in the later video, is go to your menu, go to settings, you go to fuel, and you go to fuel used, and you can reset your seasonal usage right here. Um, I get in a habit of doing this every single time. If I ever forget or um, or anything like that, I'm always disappointed because I just I, I love having this number available. And now I'll cut to uh, a video clip earlier from this season. So this is an example of why I like to track uh, fuel used. Um, so my fuel gauge is reading zero, but of burns uh, 66 gallons. So I know um, I have about eight gallons left. Um, that's about what I, this is about the level that I like to refuel at. But if I didn't have this data point of how much fuel I've used, I've kind of lost my data on how much further I can go. So that's why I like to use uh, the fuel used data point. So I just fueled up. Um, Gauge is nearly full at uh, 72.4 gallons. Uh, the tank, uh, this tank holds 74 gallons. Um, so I'm gonna reset uh, my seasonal usage. So I'll go to the main menu, go to settings, go down here to fuel, fuel used, um, and then I'll do reset for my seasonal usage. Back to zero. So this is the data point 
of fuel use that I really rely on much more so than the gauge. Gauge is helpful, gauge is relatively accurate, but uh, once you get down to uh, the last probably 20%, it starts reading uh, way more conservatively, meaning less fuel than you, in the tank that you actually have, um, which is a much rather have it that way than reading more fuel than what I actually have. But um, nevertheless, this is a gauge. Gauges are exactly what they are. It's a rough order of magnitude. Um, it's not a definitive measurement. Uh, this seasonal fuel usage, which is utilizing the fuel flow meter from the outboard engine, uh, those flow meters are quite accurate. So um, when I just fueled up now, uh, this said roughly 66 gallons, and I think I put 67 in the tank. So um, way more accurate than the gauge and something I can really rely on uh, with this number. Um, and really mostly comes into play when you're going for the distances and you're really trying to maximize your cruising range. Now, when talking about uh, maximizing the range <clears throat> on the boat, uh, what I typically do for mapping out longer trips, um, you'll fuel up, you'll reset the seasonal fuel used. Um, and uh, when making distance calculations, um, I'm always fairly conservative. Um, this is a 74 gallon tank. Um, <clears throat> I take off 10% just for reserve. Um, so I really calculate that I have about 66 uh, gallons uh, of usable fuel on the boat, which I know I have more, but again, gotta be conservative. And then I typically calculate um, an average fuel burn of 1.9 nautical miles uh, per gallon, um, which I'm usually doing better, a little bit better than that, around two. Um, so that gets me a conservative fuel range of 125 nautical miles, um, which to put that into perspective for a distance, is, it's pretty darn good. That's like going from, um, from the Dolphin Restaurant in Harpswell to Roke Island, or from Block Island to downtown New York City, or from New Fork, Virginia to Annapolis, Maryland. Um, so 125 nautical miles is some awesome distance. Um, and uh, But when you're maximizing that distance, um, paying attention to this number, is great. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned um, I like to, as I learn a new boat, I, I write down numbers. The numbers that I'm writing down every t is at the time of every fuel. Um, what I write down is <clears throat> um, how much fuel the engines are telling me that I've burned. I write down what my gauge is saying for fuel left. And then I write down how much fuel I actually put into the, uh, into the tank. And those are the three numbers I write down every single time whenever I am operating a new boat, just so I can learn uh, what this gauge is saying, because every gauge is different. Um, and, uh, but that gives me comfort in, and gets me up to speed faster on learning my boat. Um, now, uh, where is this fuel tank? Fuel tank is underneath your feet. Um, you can get access to it underneath this hatch right here, which will be a little dark, but um, right in here, you'll see, you'll see the uh, top of the tank um, with a shutoff valve and whatnot. Um, and I wanna also talk about fueling the boat. Um, I also mentioned earlier how you don't want to overfill these boats for a number of reasons. Um, but one of the reasons is um, when you overfill the boat, you're not only potentially putting some fuel in the water, which is no good, um, but you're also um, potentially clogging up a air vent filter, which is associated. This is the vent uh, for the fuel fill. Um, if you just click uh, the the um, fuel fill hose on full bore and you you walk away like you're filling up your vehicle and you go get a Twinkie or something in the uh, in the ship store you know um, 
and you come back and there's a slick in the water, um, you've potentially not only made an environmental issue, but also um, put fuel in your uh, a, a filter that's attached to the um, air vent on the tank. And therefore you've somewhat clogged that filter and that will make future fills go very slowly uh, because it, that filter is not allowing the air to exit as you're putting fuel into the tank. So you want to always be with the boat at all times when you're filling up. Um, you want to be, be present, be paying attention um, because it's, there's a lot that can go wrong when filling up boats. I hope you found this video talking about the fuel system on a 28 Axapar helpful. If you have any questions for us, please do feel free to reach out using the information below this video. And if you like these videos and you want to see more, click the subscribe buttons for more videos like this.